Mr. Today's rule, as Mr. Massey articulated, again provides for the consideration of four bills. Now, I suspect that you will be familiar with these four bills, because these four bills were under a rule two days ago. What happened to that rule? It failed, part and parcel of the chaos and the dysfunction that House Republicans have engulfed this august chamber in for the better part of the last 15 months. As of two days ago, seven rules, seven, have failed on the House floor, Mr. Speaker. You might be wondering, those watching, from home might be wondering how many rules failed when Democrats had the majority under Speaker Nancy D'Alessandro Pelosi. The answer is none. Zero. In fact, from 1999 to 2023, only two rules failed on the House floor, neither of which happened when House Democrats were in control of this chamber. The last bill, Mr. Speaker, to pass the Rules Committee and make its way to the President's desk without suspension of our rules was almost one year ago. Unprecedented. Republicans have literally presided over the most ineffective session of Congress in history. Not hyperbole. Despite, by the way, Mr. Speaker, the pressing challenges that our nation faces, they repeatedly show that they have no capacity or desire to govern. Instead, prioritizing unwarranted censures, sham impeachments, non-binding resolution after non-binding resolution after non-binding resolution. Instead of debating core issues like lowering costs, growing the middle class, building safer communities, addressing our critical national security needs. We've spent yet another week here in Washington wasting time. This is the third time, third time that we're considering a variation of one of these non-binding resolutions today. Stunts over solutions, Mr. Speaker. That has become, unfortunately, their motto. This is not how governing is supposed to work. I know, uh, I've served in this body for some time now, I know there are serious members on the other side of the aisle. I wish they would pull back their caucus and this institution from the brink and work with us in a bipartisan way to address core needs of the American people. Unfortunately, they've yet to show any desire to do so, but hope springs eternal. Mr. Speaker, I'll reserve the balance of my time, and I thank the Speaker.